Hello and welcome. Here we're going to look at the advanced options inside a migration with project. The advanced options is something that we uh, don't normally go into unless we have a specific reason to. But there are some advantages by knowing exactly what's in there and how it might uh, affect or even assist your migration. So we're going to run through and, and see each of the items and put an explanation around how they can benefit what you're doing inside the migration with console. So here we're just going to sign in as normal and find our project list. I'm going to pick the uh, the last project I was doing, which was that GoDaddy migration. Just a simple user here. But where we find these advanced options is we go into the edit pro project area here, and you can see it's a simple drop down on this menu. And we get all of this. Now, the support options are the manual entries that we can put in. Now, you can see, as, as you would know, if you've seen the, the other video about the GoDaddy migration, I had to put all of these items in. These were the tenant IDs and the client IDs for the Mod North against the uh, the two tenants, the uh, the GoDaddy tenant and then of course the M365 tenant. Now these come in as items, and we can just keep adding and adding those items as we need to. Uh, those instructions were obviously in that that video about what these mean. But this is this is where you might have seen some of these items before, and you can see obviously the ones where we're talking about using the uh, import and export impersonation on the accounts. That's what comes out on these. These get put in automatically, so you don't have to put these these items in here. To add items into here, we can just hit the plus on any of these items, and it will give us an extra box that we can put on there. And you can obviously add more and then put the text entries in that you need. Now, I'm going to just delete those ones back there and leave that alone. But let's jump into the performance item. I want to talk about this a little bit because this really does only really have an effect when you're doing things with an on-premise server, uh, not so much in the cloud. And therefore, we recommend you leave these alone for the cloud migrations. We get to choose, obviously, the, the data center you're, you're using to do the migration with. and But also here, you've got the maximum number of concurrent migration. And this is the number of connections that it can uh, simultaneously handle. It will only open one network connection, but of course, it'll try and do uh, these uh, this many tasks and, and as a threaded item across into the migration source. So of course, 100 is a standard number. If you're finding that your on-premise server is getting a little bit overwhelmed or you've got a, uh, a firewall uh, locally that's also getting overwhelmed with the, the, the data and the connections that are coming through, you might want to drop this down. Uh, we found Exchange 2010, for an example, if you're still migrating from those, you might want to drop it down to 10 or 15 just to slow it down a little bit. But 100 is a standard and a good number. We don't normally touch this one. Now, the maximum number of errors per migration, that's how many errors that it will actually have on those particular accounts before it starts to um, get rather upset about it and then obviously fail the migration on there. And of course, the, uh, the number of errors, 1,000 is quite high. Um, but of course, if you had a smaller number of errors coming through, they just get reported and obviously it just continues. This is the point where it says, nope, I've had enough. I'm not doing this anymore. And I'm going to report those errors uh, back, back to you and, and stop the migration on that particular account. Now, notifications is the email notification that you can have automatically sent to a user, whether it's the source or the destination or to yourself. You can add additional recipients in there based on the success and also the failed migration of particular accounts. So you could say, I want to set a, an email to the destination email address to say, yes, everything has worked. And you're now in the new tenant. They would have to obviously log on to the new tenant to see that. Uh, but, but of course, you might want to say, I'm going to send it to the source email address. So if they ask, let's say you're coming from a Google account they and they're logged in there, they would see uh, a prescribed email saying your email has been successful and you're now on M365 for an example. So you can set these up here and you can change the, the notification. So we can say a success. You can say here is uh, a standard item. Your migration has been completed. You've also got the ones about whether it's failed and you've got the request credentials email. I wouldn't normally be using this one in terms of a migration. It's where you ask the user for the credentials if you're not doing an impersonation on the accounts. Um, but uh, that, that's up to you how you might want to use that, that credential request item you can see here, providing information for your migration. So really, this is a, a handy thing that if you want to customize it and send an email out to people when they're done, uh, this is obviously a, a good and handy way of doing that. 
Looking at filtering now, this one where you can filter by date is very handy if you want to say you're bringing all the data over, but you might want to say, I only want to bring data from January 1st, 2021, for example. And, and I want to just trash all the mail behind it. We don't care about that. We're just going to leave it there. And that's what we want in the target. Then we would go here and we would set a, a date accordingly. And you obviously set set your, your date range and then, of course, the hour as well. Um, very handy in certain situations for migrations where, where you want to just bring in just new data and, and have a bit of a clean up there. Also, you can have items that are older than a specific date. Um, you, you might have done um, some sort of free stage previously where you've only brought in a, um, a year's worth of mail. And now you're, you might be rerunning the project to say, I'm just going to fill in all the mail for everybody for the last however many years it's been active as a, as a secondary run. And, and this is where you would say uh, items older than that specific date. So that's obviously a handy thing to have because it is a project level. You don't specify it obviously at the mailbox level. Um, you can just do it at, at this level here. Now the by folder one here is a is a sneaky one because it's it's just sitting in the filtering by folder. But this is particularly powerful for everything that you want to do with the migration. Let's say you wanted to uh, not bring over deleted items or not bring over subfolders of the inbox, or you wanted to include particular folders or do some sort of mapping with the folder. All of that can be done with regex, and it is in this little simple command here. Now what we do here is we click on this little help button here and you can see this is where uh, we, we start to see the, the power of this and, and what you can do here. It, it does explain quite carefully about how things are, are really working. Now, if I keep going down here, we'd say these examples. Now these are the ones you would be then cut and pasting these items in. So you can see here we've got options to say do not migrate subfolders under the inbox. Uh, and, and all these items, how you build the regex command, you could say, I don't want to migrate particular folders. Uh, I want to migrate just the inbox for people. I only want to process folders starting with, with this as a reference, or even skip folders starting with that. Everything you can do, and of course you can bind these regex commands together just with the brackets there, and, and obviously the pipe inclusion there. Uh, but as I say, it, it is a, a very, very powerful thing that you can have. Now, there are some items in here at the top, it does talk about the regex hero site that you can go to to build these, these things up. But let's, in this particular example, I'm going to say, I don't want to bring over anything in deleted items. We're, we're done with that. And we're just going to remove that as an option. And what we choose as a command there is this one. So that's this item here with the deleted items. Now I'm going to give you a little trick with this. If you were to just try and select this and then let go of your mouse, it's because it's a light box window, it's just going to drop straight back to the other screen. So what you're going to need to do is just go down here. If you are cut and pasting from this help screen, do that and now keep the mouse uh, button clicked down and press the control C now. Now when it jumps back, I can jump in and control V and there's my deleted items item. And that, and that will go for every item in that regex. If you're using those as, as examples, that's how you just cut and paste in there. Avoid a little bit of frustration, I found, just uh, knowing that little, little bit of information there. Now, there's an extra item in here in this particular article from the, the help page I wanted to show you about because it comes down to folder mapping. Now, I found sometimes what you want to do is you might say, I'm bringing across all the mail from a particular uh, inbox from uh, an old account, but I don't want it going into the actual inbox on the destination. I want to call it... Um, old company mail or, or something like that, that you can say migrated mail and you can give it a new name. Now, this is where this comes in with the folder mapping for the migration project. What we do here is we'll take this command and once again, just control C as you come in there. Now it doesn't go in here. It actually goes back in the support option. So we need to go here and add that in and drop it in that way. Now, what you do here is you would say then there inbox and we call it something like this old mail. That's a good example of, of how we would, would get that to go into a different folder. Now, what it means, though, is that that is a company wide setting. So everything from the inbox is going to go into that old company mail on the target inbox. So just something to be aware of there. But as I say, there's inside this folder and in here, there is a lot of different options that you can go through and cut and paste into the, uh, the folder filtering 
and also into the support options as well. It goes into a lot of detail about what you can put in. So there's some good folder mapping examples here as well. So definitely something you want to have a look at. You might want to include that. If you've got a particular task in a migration you're trying to achieve, chances are these, these options in here are going to be what you're looking for. So we'll leave this one in here for the uh, don't delete, sorry, don't uh, migrate deleted items. Sometimes a handy one. And we go have a look at the source and destination here. So these are going to be slightly different on whether you've got coming from a Gmail source or a Microsoft 365 source. Here we'd say, what are we migrating from? And you can actually migrate from not the mailbox, from recoverable items. It's, it's often a, a thing that people want to do. In this item, we're just going to leave it as mailbox and use that impersonation to authenticate. Now that comes back to that credential check I was talking about using the impersonation with the mod north when you set up the project. And I know you've probably gone through that already. If you haven't, please look at the other the videos and training sessions on how you can build uh, the start for a migration with project. But here we would generally be using that. And, and obviously there's there's details and instructions around uh, around all of that in this FAQ that's in here. But uh, down here on the destination, you can see what are we migrating to. We go into the mailbox, go into an archive, go into recoverable items. So in this case, you might say recoverable to recoverable. You obviously don't have much choice on that, but you can see how that would take effect and, and use that. So on the mailbox, you can say, I want to go into the archive. I want to migrate everything from the source into the destination's archive on the target. And that's obviously how you would set up. Once again, remember, this is a project-wide setting. This is not for individual mailboxes. Uh, so you want to be aware of who's in that, that batch and that project so that you can make these take effect accordingly. I'm going to leave this one as mailbox because it's obviously what we want to achieve there. Now, if you've got a, a, three, sorry, a 365 migration, this is what you'll see. But if you're coming from Gmail, it does have a slightly different option here. I'm just going to view a, a screen from another migration I've done. I'm just going to bring that over now. So I've just overlaid this video, as you can see there, over the top. But you can, what you're seeing there is the G Suite options. You have the how it handles the mail folders. And you can do convert the labels to folders, convert the labels to categories. Now, that's an important thing when it comes to a Gmail migration because the, the labels are obviously very different in M365. We don't have labels. We have folders and you can have categories as well. So when it, the way it handles the labels, if you had an email, uh, let's say you had a, one with four labels or, or tags on it, um, what it would do is it would take those labels, it will create folders for each of those labels. But what it will also do is place a copy of that email in every single folder. Now that's something very important to be aware of. And that's a, that's a very standard migration task. All the tools you'll find uh, perform it that way. But it means that you end, otherwise you'd end up with a lot of folders that would be essentially blank. And, and that generally confuses the user to say, I'm in that folder, there's nothing in it, but I know I had labels attached to it. And of course, if you were to say, I'm going to pick one label and make put it in that folder, how do you pick what label? Uh, it's virtually impossible to work that out from, from a mailbox tool looking at that source on that tenant. That, that's why it copies them into every single folder. Now, the danger with that is if they have a very large mailbox, let's say they had a 40 gig mailbox and they had tons of labels scattered across them, you could have the risk of that blowing out into a, a 100 gig plus mailbox, which is going to be a problem. So what you want to be doing is just having a having a look at the source in terms of the sizing of it and work out whether the labels converting to categories is, is a better option for you or whether it should go into folders. But that's obviously something you learn with the experience about how these, how these migrations work. And it's also a customer experience thing too. You really want to be talking to your client about uh, what experience they want to have for their users in this particular area. Um, and the other option down there you can see is, is how it does the su suggested contacts that exist in G Suite, uh, whether or not it actually skips those or, or brings those over and, and tries to do something with them in the contact section. So there's the option about at that one as well. So moving on to licensing, this is a very simple one. And you can say, yes, it consumes one license per migration. Now, why would we have that in there? That's because the license for migration with when you do the UMB or the mailbox license, it is a 50 gig license. So therefore, this limits how many licenses can be consumed. If you had somebody that had uh, 56 or say 80 gig of mail, it's going to stop at 50 and not continue. Therefore, you could say here, I want to allow 
the consumption of two licenses for the mailboxes so I can get that extra data in there. You can talk to your salesperson about how that might work as well in terms of the, the costing attached to it and, and see what kind of consumption you would need for your particular project. Um, so that's and that's where you turn that on into one. So if you do come across that, that you hit that license barrier and they've got more data, uh, this is where you would go back into the advanced options, find this, make this two instead, it'll consume another license, and then you basically just rerun that migration for that particular line item, and it will go ahead and migrate the rest of that information for you. Now moving on to the audit log options, obviously in the migration with console, the, there's plenty of logs there about what's happening with the migration down to the individual user level and the like. If you want to store that information, on your own SQL database inside your own Azure environment, then you can do so by selecting SQL Azure and give it this information about where the data wants to go. Then you can offload all of that log information so it goes into there instead, and you can view that uh, yourself inside, as I said, your own Azure environment if you'd like to. This one, I'm going to turn it back to that default option. Now have a look at the maintenance. Now this is the setting that you'd apply for if a project is unused, how long before it's automatically deleted off of the migration with servers? And normally it's 180 days, which is six months. That is if it's unused. If you keep continually using the project, it will stay for however long you need it for. Uh, but obviously this, this is a setting, this is a standard one, and uh, it, we normally would leave that alone. Unless you require a bit more retention of that, you might want to make it a little bit longer. That is up to you. But that is where you would set those items if you want to have the project um, kept more than that 180 days. So thank you for watching. This has the, been the advanced options run through of a migration with project. If you do need extra support, by all means, reach out to the support team at BitTide and they'd be more than happy to help you out with any particular items you have. But uh, once again, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. <laughs>